Oh man, you want to take a look at how far out of plumb this wall is. You think new builds are bad? I mean, this is a hundred years old and it's not going anywhere, but it has presented a few challenges. Hiya folks, welcome back to our little mini series about building a downstairs toilet and utility room as part of our extension project. This is a little bit of a tricky one to film because I'm kind of in a cupboard, but there's quite a few interesting things going on here that are worth showing you. And if you're ever getting tradespeople in to do a job for you, it's little things like this that you might think the job is gonna take 10 or 20 minutes to do. You know, it's taken the best part of two hours to get this one piece of wood on the wall. But anyway, let me show you what's going on because it'll all make a bit more sense if I show you up close. So I think last time we left it that we've got all the plaster boarding done and now it's time to start on a lot of the boxing framework and stuff like that because it's easier to get that in now before there's a toilet and things like that in. So I've put the bit of wood across the back there. That's a nice easy one, didn't need to show you that. But if you remember, we're gonna be paneling off this back wall. So it's effectively gonna be a false wall, which means we need a couple of little mini studs up the back. And I just want to show you how far out of plumb this right hand wall is. So that bit of wood is more or less plumb. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, we're next to the wall at the bottom and at the top, we are pretty much an inch away from the wall at the top. Just to show you with the spirit level on the wall, I don't know if you can see the bubble there, but it's way over at the left. We are, well, massively out of plumb. And that's one of those things. So there's plumb there-ish, I can't, really see it because the camera's in the road. So what's that? A lot out of plumb. Anyway, it's one of those things that you have to deal with with older houses. Older houses generally have much less plumb walls than newer houses. Really the difference is is that newer houses there's no excuse for non-plumb walls because it's very easy to build plumb walls when it's all block work and dot and dab and stud partitions and things like that. But on a wall like this, this would have been wet plaster all the way through the brickwork. And you know, it's one of those things, wet plaster, when you've got a, a, an inch thick skim of plaster and then skim plaster over the top, it doesn't always come out perfectly level and flat. And to the naked eye standing here, that looks like a flat wall to me. It looks absolutely fine, but it's not until you get a spirit level on it that you realize that it is all over the place. Not only that, but then this back wall as well, this is far from flat as well. So when you then come to attach a stud onto that wall to take some plasterboard and you want that stud to be obviously uh, level and plumb, then that does present a few problems. What I've actually had to do is scribe away a part of the back of this stud here. I just did that with this spoke shave. I couldn't be bothered filming it. And then I've had to use a whole bunch of spacers and glue and really big screws just to kind of get the whole thing plumb. And we've pretty much got it, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. Um, we're at a funny angle, so you probably can't really see, but that is absolutely bang on there. So that side's in, as I say, it was a bit too tricky to film it going in. But as I say, that took a while. I had to rip the wood to the correct size, spoke shave, scribe it to the wall, drill into the unbelievably hard brickwork. I've used an assortment of screws depending on how thick the plaster was, but they're mostly, I think, five by eighties that I ended up using going through into the brickwork. All the spaces, the glue, obviously making sure that it's plumb left to right and making sure it's plumb back to front as well. And a lot of you might be thinking, why are you bothered about it being plumb left to right, so in other words, relative to this wall, if there's plasterboard going over it, you're never gonna see it. But the reason is, is when you come to put the screws in and you've got your bit of plasterboard over the top of that, the only way you've got a reference of where that stud is, is by drawing a level line on the wall. It makes life much, much harder if you're trying to screw into studs that aren't plumb top to bottom because you lose your reference point of where the stud is. Anyway, the good news is on the left-hand side, life is much, much easier. So I've made this stud here, put in a little notch to get round the gas pipe. And all I'm gonna do is attach it straight into the stud of 
the left hand partition wall. That is much, much easier than trying to go into the brickwork, which as I say, almost certainly isn't plumb. I'm just using four by seventies for this. They don't need to be particularly beefy screws, but what I have done, I don't know if you can see, but I've just put a little pencil mark where these plasterboard screws are because I don't want to end up accidentally hitting those. So I've marked all of the screw locations and then what I'll do is I'll just hold that up against the wall, mark out some kind of roughly evenly spaced points to put the screw through and uh, jobs are good. Again, I'm going to start at the top, but don't go tight against this wall because we might need to come out a little bit to make sure that it's uh, plumb. And if I go tight against that wall, I've lost the opportunity to do that. Let's just see what we're up against. Drop that. Perfect. Right, if I don't breathe on that, we'll be good. Happy with that. Right, they are in and solid. The next challenge that we've got is that we need something, we need some sort of support in the middle. You can't have an 80 centimetre, well, probably more than 80 centimetre span without some sort of support. Plasterboard, absolute maximum uh, 60 centimetres, 600 centres is what you should be working to. Uh, I generally prefer to work to 400 centers because it gives it a bit extra support and you don't end up with spongy walls. So we're going to have to add another middle support. The easiest thing to do actually would be to just add some bracing across like that. But that's going to eat out into the toilet even more. So if you can imagine, we've already got 50 mil from that, 40 mil plus another 12 mil for the plasterboard. You know, we're eating out into the toilet quite a bit. I don't really want to do that. So instead, what I'm just going to do is add another central support, but we're going to have to make sure that this central support is in exactly the same plane as the right-hand bit of wood and the left-hand bit of wood. So again, that's going to present its challenges. We'll come back to that. Because before I do that, what I do want is a bit of wood behind here, to support the toilet once the toilet's in because it'll make life much easier than trying to fix the toilet onto what is kind of a, a weird kind of little partition type thing. You wouldn't believe that we sell tape measures. Tape measures in this house just vanish. Anyway, we don't need to be particularly exact with this, but we are, for those holes on the back of the system, around 700. 70 centimetres. I will be cleaning up the back of this, by the way. That's just uh, the last people had siliconed it onto the wall at the top there, which generally is a good thing to do. Stops it rattling about, but I need to take that off. And when we fit it, I'll put some new silicon on. But for the minute, 700 is the number I need to remember. As I say, we don't need to be mega exact, and trying to do this with one hand as well is nigh on impossible. But uh, yeah, that is literally impossible. Let me hold the camera with my knees. I have no idea if this is in shot, but there's with 70 there. But that's, bearing in mind, there's a floor to go on this, so we'll come up a little bit more. So we'll say there. So I'll just pop a level line across there. About there. Again, that's how flat these walls are. And I'll just write WC on that, so remember, that's where the loo's going. Now, one other thing I want to show you here, and uh, oh, again, it's so tricky to film because I just can't get in with the normal camera. I've set the GoPro up, and it's on super wide angle, so everything's going to look curvy, but hopefully you can get a general idea of what I'm talking about here. But basically, 
one of the other things I want to check before I go to the trouble of adding a centre support down the middle here is how square is this wall to this wall because if you imagine the toilet's going to be fastened against this wall and if this wall's skew width it's going to look ridiculous so you want this wall to be relatively square to that wall so all I've done I've got the uh, top of the door lining here which I know is nice and straight and it happens to be about the right width so all I'm doing just bridging across that gap and I've got my square here and I'm just checking you know it's not perfect but it's not bad we've got like what a three millimeter gap there that's fine if this back wall was massively on the skew then what I would do is add a spacer either over the top of this so I would rip a, a long thin piece of wood and just attach it to the front of that or the front of that depending on how much we'll have to bring things back into square and then that would just guarantee that once the toilet is on the wall which bear in mind there's one mark for the toilet so the toilet's going to be kind of attached here-ish so once the toilet's on the wall it's not skew width in relation to this left hand wall here I'm not as bothered about the right hand wall because that wall's all over the place that that's like it's so curvy this wall it depends at which point you look at it <laughs> but this wall is perfectly flat and if the toilet was on a funny angle it would look really odd in relation to this wall so that's the wall that I'm checking it against and as I say and I've gone all the way up so I've checked at the bottom there really I mean that is pretty good really quite pleased with that gone all the way up and just checked yeah we're, we're good I'm happy with that so now that we've done that what I can then do is using this bit of wood is I can just check what size our middle bit of wood needs to be so it should be 50 mil but bearing in mind that on this right hand side this right hand stud is off the wall a little bit so it might not be 50 mil so let's check so here so yeah 50 50 probably closer to 53 to be honest 55 oh nearly 60 at the top so yeah we're a centimeter out from top to bottom but that's fine we can address that with some spaces yeah I think 50 is going to be the way to go and that will work out just fine <laughs> I think this video is rapidly turning into a video all about attaching things to wonky walls. So with this being um, quite a wide bit of wood that way and quite narrow that way, I'm counter boring the holes. So I've done a, a clearance hole like you would normally do. So I've done a, uh, it's about a five millimeter clearance hole for these. Um, so that's going all the way through, just to show you. And then I've, used this just to counter bore just so the head of the screw is a little bit further into the wood otherwise the wood tends to kind of wobble about on the wall and what I'm also doing here normally I would say you know start with your top screw and then you kind of hang it off the top screw but because we've got a great big bulge in the wall like here-ish I'm not going to do that I'm going to attach it from where the wall sticks out the furthest and because it's going to act like a bit of a seesaw and then I can get wedges and spacers in at the top and bottom until I've got this perfectly plug. Of course my drill bits now vanished. I have marked a plumb line on the wall it doesn't need to be exactly on that but it just gives us a, a vague kind of reference point and as I say I'm going to attach it from kind of this point here and then it can kind of rock backwards and forwards and that on to its heart's content. I'm just marking the plaster. And then what I'm also going to do, where's my bit of door header? So again, I'm just using that. That is not bad. That's pretty good actually. Where are we at the top? 
So it needs to come in a little bit at the top. We'll suck that in with a screw at the bottom. Needs to come out just a tiny bit. Oh, not a lot in it. A couple of spaces, that'll sort that out. So just double check we're nice and plumb. And then I'm just going to drill straight through with the STS for the other holes. I'll get a couple of screws in just to stop it wobbling about. really difficult to film this but all I'm going to do is work my way up the wall like that so behind each fixing I'm going to put a spacer so that this bit of wood is just touching this bit of wood which we know is touching that and that so we're all perfect at the bottom there good to go that needs to go as is That is absolutely solid. I'm just going to pop a few blobs of glue behind this as well, just because we've got such a huge gap. I mean, it ain't going anywhere, trust me, but it's just one of those things. And yeah, that is absolutely solid. Nice and square to that wall. Plum uh, that way, and it's plumb that way as well. So we are good to go and we are nearly ready to put the plasterboard on. So we now need to think what is going behind here before we cover it all up. And if you remember last time, I hadn't really decided where we're gonna run the plumbing for the cold water supply for the toilet and the hot and cold for the basin. And if you remember what I was saying, these pipes here, which is a hot and cold, are gonna be really tricky to break into because they're so close to this gas pipe here. And plus, if I break in further up, we're just gonna have to box it in. It's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. So I think the best option is gonna be to run an entirely new hot and cold in, and we'll just come underneath the soil pipe here. We'll come under here, where it'll be boxed in, and we don't really have to worry about it. Literally two pipes coming along here, tee off for the cold water supply for the toilet, bring it around, and that can supply the basin. And then over on this side, on the other side of the wall, I'll just leave the pipes kind of sticking out here and we'll worry about that a little bit later down the line. But bearing in mind that there's gonna be like a kitchen unit here. So all the pipe work behind here is gonna be completely hidden anyway. So it kind of makes sense. We'll just bring hot and cold out here and we'll attach it in, you know, we'll work something out. Now I do have a proper pipe bender, but I'm terrible at using it, so I'm just going to survive with me spring. I kind of, I know where I am with a spring, pipe benders. I need a bit more practice. Now is not the time to think how we're going to do this. Again, kind of difficult to show what I'm trying to achieve here. Uh, so I've already drilled the hole through the stud and um, I can either come in this one for the hot, kind of there. I'm no plumber, I don't do this all the time. I can do my own stuff, but 
So that's a bit lower down than that. Uh, this video is not going to be about plumbing because I'm not a plumber and I'm not going to tell you how to do plumbing because there's loads of really good plumbers on YouTube. Don't use my plumbing as a guide for how you do your plumbing. But at the same time, uh, I do want to show you how I do stuff. Anyway, I'll fiddle on with this for a bit, get it kind of running the way I want it and then I'll come back to you because all you're going to see is my backside. So I've kind of got a handle on what's going on now. And uh, yeah, I do like to deburr my pipes. I don't know if that's like normal or not, but I've always done it. I've got this little deburring pencil thing, if you can see that. And it's just after you've used a pipe cutter, it leaves like a sharp internal bit and you want to kind of get rid of that. If you are a plumber, do give us some tips, because <laughs> as I say, it's not something I do all the time, as you will be able to tell. That's all good. I need to drill some holes in this wall. Right, SDS it is. Don't judge. Don't judge my soldering skills. Please post any tips down in the comments below. bit of a tricky one this one because if I solder that in place the pipe's gonna get really hot and melt my soil pipe so I'm not taking the risk and I'm gonna attempt to solder it in the correct shape from up here <laughs> Looks better, you see. Can do it, I can do it. Oh, yeah. As I say, that's about the limit of my plumbing skills in copper, at least, but I'm happy enough with that. I'll just do push fit from that right hand side onwards because it'll all be boxed in. You know what it is? I've never ever seen a problem with push fit fittings. I use the uh, JG stuff. Probably been in common use in the UK now for what, at least 15 years, maybe 20 years. I've never ever seen it leak. But in all honesty, all of this, it'll be boxed in and it's relatively easy to get access to anyway. The main thing is, is that all these joints around the back here are all copper and fingers crossed hopefully they won't leak. I will test it all before I put the final layer of plasterboard on the back here, but uh, at least that's running now. Right, let's try and vaguely shape this a little bit. <laughs> A 
couple of little spaces here just to bring this out a tiny bit. And we've got a decent fall on that, so champion. Right, folks, well, that's a canny day's work there. We've got quite a lot done. Since I've got all of the supply pipe work pretty much done, other than connecting it up to the live plumbing at that side, um, I think probably what I'm gonna do offline is get that connected up and then I can flush it through, test it, make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. And then assuming that's all all right, we'll get that end bit of plasterboard put on. So it doesn't look like we've done very much today, but we have actually got quite a bit done. So we've got the hot and cold feed directly there, ready to plumb into all this stuff over this side and it comes in around there, around the bottom of the soil pipe and everything is ready to hook up to the basin once that's on the wall and we've got our tap. By the way, I always leave either an isolation valve or service valves or something like that so that once the system's charged up with water when we test it, I've got some way of releasing the pressure. If you just leave an end stop on, then it's very difficult to get the pressure out of the system without getting water absolutely everywhere. But if you do this and just put a little service valve on, then you can just drain any water in the pipes into a bucket and it just generally makes life easier. So they're only temporary. Obviously once the sink's there, all of that push fit plumbing there will disappear. And same at the bottom there, that's temporary as well. We've just put a little isolation valve there so it can drain any pressure out of the pipework when it comes to hooking the toilet up. And other stuff we've got done today. We've got the waste all running for the basin. That is ready to go. I'm not putting the basin in quite yet because we've got a big sheet of plasterboard to get in here. And if that ends up kind of getting in the road, um, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. Talking of plasterboard, we've got all of our end studs in, all ready for the back kind of false wall thing. I do still want to run a piece of wood behind the plasterboard kind of here-ish just to make it a bit easier to attach 
the toilet to the wall. But other than that, I'm quite pleased with that. As I say, my very limited plumbing skills. Once again, it's amazing how long all this sort of stuff takes. That's pretty much an entire day's work there. So folks, we're getting there. We're probably about 70% done. As per usual, if you've got any questions or comments or anything, pop them down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see all of this that's happening next time. The sink's not particularly great. The waste isn't great and it's leaking. I'm not particularly happy with this bottle trap. Oh no. Cable ties aren't long enough. You are kidding me. Cable ties provided with the duct aren't long enough to reach around the duct. Also, don't forget, if you want to support this channel directly, if some of the stuff I've done has been useful to you and you just want to say thank you, or you just want to join the amazing Member Zone community, then head over to members.gosswithhandyman.com, link down in the description below, and you can get access to a whole range of extra videos that are exclusively available to channel members who are literally helping to keep the lights on on this channel. Anyway, folks, as per usual, be nice to one another, look after each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye.